an ongoing debate about cannabis and using it as a treatment for different disorders and diseases. It also leads to the debate of THC versus CBD and the effects from using the different cannabinoids. So in today's video, I'll talk about how CBD and THC binds to the cannabinoid receptors differently and how this can produce a different cascades of effect. And then I wanna focus more on CBD oil as a potential treatment for alopecia areata. So first I wanna talk about alopecia and what is alopecia? So alopecia is the partial or complete absence of the hair in certain areas and this leads to baldness. And the etiology behind it, um, the scientists think that Alopecia stem from illness, drugs, endocrine disorder, dermatitis, some hereditary factors, also radiation and other uh, physiological changes such as aging. And there are treatments on the market such as using your different drugs, your different creams and your different um, steroid injections and also transplanting hair and also some pr prosthetic things you can do such as wearing a wig so with alopecia you have your different types of alopecia and i'm going to discuss a few so you have your alopecia areata which is loss of hair in patches uh, and this is usually found in the beard or the skull and you have your alopecia totalis which is the complete loss of hair on the skull and also alopecia universalis is like hair loss over the entire body. And today I want to focus more on alopecia areata. So most scientists think alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease. And the reason why is because it's your immune cells attacking the hair follicles, causing the hair to come out in clumps and patches. So looking at some mechanics behind it, some pathology behind it, as it being an autoimmune disease. So looking at your normal hair cycle, you have your different stages of hair growth. You have your antigen phase, which the blood vessels attach to the hair follicles, bringing in nutrition. And this allows for the hair to grow. And this period usually lasts three to six years before it's transitioning into the catagen uh, phase, which the blood vessels detach from the hair follicles and this stops the growth of the hair. And then it transitions into the telogen phase where the hair falls out, but the cycle re uh, returns to the antigen phase and it continues to happen throughout your life. So this happens with most, most all healthy adults it's just a part of your hair cycle. But what we see in alopecia areata, we see that in its antigen phase and cat catagen phase, we see that there is an influx in immune cells. And these immune cells are very toxic to the hair follicles and they kill off the hair follicles. So what's going on? You have these dendritic cells, also referred to your antigen presenting cells. And with your antigen presenting cells, they find something in this half follicles that they're reporting as foreign to the T cells. So when they report back to the T cells and the T cells say, okay, yeah, it is foreign, they migrate to the hair follicles. And they start producing cytokines and these cytokines are pro-inflammatory and they recruit other immune cells such as your natural killer cells, such as your cytotoxic T cells. And with the release of cytokines, it's killing off the hair follicles, so causing destruction to the cells and then the loss of hair. So, like I said, there are treatments out there. You have your topical treatment using creams or ointments, and the benefits behind it is that you see visible hair growth in a few months, but there are drawbacks, such as skin discoloration, and also hair may not even grow back. But the injections 
are usually more effective than the topical cream. So you have your corticosteroid injections and the benefits is that you see visible hair growth in four weeks and your hair, your hair returns pretty quick compared to using the topical creams. But there are drawbacks because the injections are painful and they don't prevent new hair loss and they're costly. So I want to look at, are there natural compounds such as cannabinoids that can be used to alleviate alopecia? So cannabinoid, a cure. Can we use it as a cure? So first we must discuss what are cannabinoids and cannabinoids are a class of diverse chemical compounds that binds to the cannabinoid receptors. And you have your different ligands that are cannabinoid. You have both endogenous and exogenous ligands, such as your AEA and your 2AG, which are endogenous cannabinoids that your body uh, naturally produce. And also THC and CBD, which are compounds that's isolated from the cannabis plant. So in your body, looking at the receptors that these cannabinoids bind to, they bind to the cannabinoid receptors and you have your different types of receptors. You, uh, you have your CB1 receptor and also your CB2 receptors. And I just want to discuss the difference between the CB1 receptor and the CB2 receptor. The CB1 receptor are usually found in the central nervous system um, and also the brain, but in lesser extent, they can be found in other regions of the body. But looking at CB2 receptors, it's usually found in peripheral organs, especially the ones associated with the immune system. So, the thing about CBD and THC, they bind to these cannabinoid receptors in different ways. That's what leads to the different effect of THC um, compared to CBD. So looking at THC, we see that it normally binds to the CB1 receptor and it binds pretty good to the receptor. That's why you get this psychosis effect from um, THC and not from CBD, which also binds to the CB1 receptor and the CB2 receptor, but they bind um, in different affinity with CBD binding at a lesser affinity compared to THC. And then we see these cascades of effects and we see that there are different effects comparing THC to CBD, but in this video, I want to focus more on CBD because it has a higher affinity to the CB2 receptor. And with the CB2 receptor, we can cause immunomodulation of these immune cells, hijacking these immune cells, turning these immune cells off, uh, producing immunosuppressive environment in the hair follicles, allowing for the hair to grow back. So looking at the CB2 receptor and the CBD, uh, using CBD, using the cannabinoid CBD to bind to the CB2 receptor, we see that when it binds to these immune cells, it has this immunosuppressive effect by decreasing these cytokines that can be pro-inflammatory to cells, also decreasing chemokines that's causing this migration of uh, cytotoxic immune cells. We see a decrease in proliferation of the cytotoxic immune cells. We see an increase in apoptosis, and this is the killing off of these harmful immune cells in these hair follicles and also a decrease in reactive oxygen species so harmful to the hair follicles. So CBD oil, can it be used as a potential treatment for alopecia areata? So going back and looking at the different, the, the hair cycle and 
what we talked about before. We talked about the normal half cycle. We have the antigen phase, the cathogen phase, the telogen phase that returns back to the antigen phase. But once we look at the half cycle and alopecia areata, we see that this influx of immune cells that are killing off the cells in the hair follicle, therefore leading to the loss of hair. However, by using CBD, we can bind to these immune cells, causing these immune cells to decrease the cytokines, decrease the chemokines, the chemokines the, uh, decrease the proliferation of these cytotoxic T cells, increase apoptosis of these cytotoxic T cells. So therefore, we're killing off the 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 harmful immune cells in this region, and also decrease uh, decreasing the radioactive oxygen species that stops the harmful uh, microenvironment of the hair follicles. Therefore, eventually returning the hair cycle to normal. So those are my thoughts. And I just want to say thank you for watching my video. My name is Brian Holloman. Um, I have a master's of science degree in biotechnology where I study both plant and animal science. And right now I'm working on my doctoral degree in immunology. So you can also follow me on IG at side underscore nerd eight and also green immune. And if you have any questions, just hit my DM DMs on either page and I'll get back with you.